Today's Friday, October 3rd, 2024, and you are listening to episode number 10 of the Doghouse Podcast. From doghousesystems.com, this is the Doghouse Podcast. Podcast. All right, we'd like to welcome everybody back to episode number 10. And as always, we've got Abby and Lorenzo joining me today. Welcome, guys and Hello. gals. <laughs> Hello. So it's been uh, quite the week. Um, it's, uh, man, this whole week has flown by. Uh, we had some family out of uh, the Newport Ritchie area that were scheduled to fly out Thursday to come visit us last week. And uh, because of the hurricane coming through on Friday, their flights were canceled. Uh, so they, they decided to uh, try to see if they could get it scheduled for Friday afternoon uh, to be able to get in. Uh, we ended up having a great weekend with them. Uh, th- it was their first time into Texas. Nice. Uh, it was my wife's uh, cousin and his wife, and uh, we ended up going to the uh, Texas State Fair. Oh, how was that? It was pretty cool. First time that I had ever gone to it myself. Uh, my wife had been uh, quite a few times, so you know she was excited to be able to take us all out there. Honestly, it wasn't what I had expected. Uh, did you get the funnel cake? I did not get oh. the funnel cake. Funnel but, cake's like a staple of the state fair. <laughs> but the other staple, Fletcher's corn dogs. Yeah. I did get one of those. Interesting. That was, it was really good. They make them right there on the spot. And uh, we got that. Uh, we ended up going to the rodeo that evening. Uh, we got to see part of a uh, dog show doing tricks and stuff, but their mics went out. So they ended up uh, putting uh, an early end to that. Got to see uh, a lot of the car manufacturers were there. So we got to see some of the newer uh, vehicles that are coming out next year. And it just, it was a lot bigger than I expected. I mean, it, that fair was huge. It's always a staple in the fall. For, yeah. For us up here. <laughs> yep. Yep. They had a football game uh, going on as well. All the animals, the the farm animals and stuff. We got to see some goats, uh, two of them that were just born that morning. <gasps> How cute. They were cute. Oh, and then uh, as the marching goats. band was going by, they started cranking up the drums and those two goat, baby goats were like, what the heck, man? <laughs> they kind of hopped <laughs> with the drums. But uh, uh, we had a blast. And then uh, we went out to Fort Worth uh, the next day. I got to do the cattle um the, they, the crossing yeah the crossing yeah. so they got to see the big longhorns and just got a real good nice uh taste of texas and in their case we're able to kind of get away from things for a little bit because of uh because of the weather and everything so um they're back home now but we had a blast and uh it was a good time i had a great weekend alabama beat georgia <laughs> That's all that I cared about. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, uh, I saw the score early on and I thought it was going to be just an absolute, just a blowout. Uh, and somehow, some way, Georgia one, came back. One would think. That ended up being a very close game. It did. It was very stressful to watch. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. There was a lot of yelling in my household. <laughs> <laughs> We got a lot to talk about today. Uh, we've got some uh, stories that we're going to be talking about on the tech side of things uh, the, with the tech news uh, with BarkBits. And then, as always, on the tech treat side of things, Abby's got uh, some cool games that she's going to be talking about to us. And in Pack Talk, we do have a tech support question that uh, we'll be going over. So, that being said, let's go ahead and get right into the first segment, uh, which is our story about. Back to Intel once again. Intel does have, uh, they had a statement where they are recommending that with the patches that have taken place on 13th and 14th gen uh, CPUs to still stick with default settings afterwards. Yeah, so reported by Tom's Hardware, um, Intel doesn't yet have a tool to detect which chips are affected, but they're urging everyone to update their BIOS to a version that includes microcode 0.12b. Um, and after that, it's good to go into your BIOS and restore your default settings, meaning restore the Intel defaults on the boards that we use, the ASUS boards, it'll be hitting F5 when you're in the BIOS. And if your chip 
isn't exhibiting any symptoms, but starts to exhibit symptoms later, whether it's before or after you apply the update, Intel has also increased the warranty period from a base of three years to five years on all the possibly affected chips. So even if you don't have issues now and you develop issues later, not to worry, for that duration of five years, reach out to Intel, they'll get you squared away. If you have a doghouse system and you're having issues with your system, whether it's before or after applying the update, go ahead and reach out and we'll get you pointed in the right direction, whether that's a replacement, assistance updating your BIOS, or reaching out to Intel if you're out of warranty, which is unlikely at this point, given how recent the chips are. Saw an interesting story this week. Uh, so Steam has a really cool feature on there where uh, you can opt in uh, to share your hardware specs. And with at any given time, I don't know how many millions of users that might be using Steam. That's a great way to kind of be able to see what are folks using out there. And on the GPU side of things, um, it looks like 4060, RTX 4060s are uh, becoming a bigger part of that ecosystem. Uh, still at this point, leading uh, the pack on the video card side of things is the RTX 3060, which was a great bang for the buck video card. Makes a lot of sense that uh, they still would have the market share. That being said, the RTX 4060s right behind it, uh, catching up. In fact, by next month, they may uh, take over. The RTX 4060 Ti uh, was uh, behind the 4060 as well. And kind of rounding up the pack, number four was the RTX 3060 Ti. Number five was the RTX 3070. And I'll even uh, give a special mention to number six, RTX 2060 ended up uh, on the list as well. So that honestly makes a lot of sense. Wouldn't you agree with that, Lorenzo? Yeah, cards in that sub $500 price point tend to be the most performant per dollar bang for your buck. So I'm not surprised that those 60 series cards especially have such a long um, lifespan, especially when you're just gaming and you're not using it for production. That 60 series is going to give you all the performance you really need. Yeah. I'm a little surprised uh, that... I guess for some reason I was thinking maybe the 4070 or 4070 Super would have uh, been a little bit higher up on the list. I think it's just a matter of time, though, uh, as more more folks will get into that. Yeah, I'm, I'm running a 4070 non-Super in my system, and I think that's also great, but it's a little bit higher higher end than the 60 series. So, sure. Yeah, I think volume play is the 60 series. If you want something a little more performant that costs a little more, go for the 70 or 70 super now yeah yeah give you a little bit of future proofing uh for down the road but can't knock uh the 4060 or 4060 ti those uh, those two video cards definitely make a lot of sense and obviously um it shows because those uh did top the list yeah I was taking a little bit further look as well. Uh, just it's kind of cool being able to go through the different things that uh, get shown on the hardware and software survey. Again, this was based on September uh, last month. On the operating side of things, uh, which which OS do you think would have been on top of the two? I would assume Windows, but I'm wondering if I'm oh, sorry to be more sorry, specific. Yeah. <laughs> which, which version? No, that was oh, uh, because Windows, you could have been thinking of Linux. And I'd I say that. at this point, I would hope Windows 11 just given the impending, not demise, but end of life of Windows 10, I would hope 11. I would have thought that as well, but that is not the case. Um, it's still Windows 7. No, I'm kidding. It's actually Windows <laughs> It's Windows. That would, have been, that would have been a blind, a blindsided victory on that one. Yeah. Now, Windows 10 still had the leap, but barely. So they were at 48.66. Windows 11 right behind it at 47.69. So I think we're going to be seeing that crossover here pretty soon. Interesting, because the last time we talked about Windows 11, it was on top of Windows yeah. 10 at the last survey they did. Yep, exactly. I think in August. That's right. So. I, I forgot that we did talk about that. You're yeah. right. So the battle is on. I think <laughs> uh, we're very well could be, you know, just the number of folks that, uh, well, how does the survey work? I guess that's a good question. If you're opted in, how would that be the case? You usually get a pop-up that asks you if you want to participate in the survey. Right. Um, and then if you opt in, it collects a little bit of data, sends it back to Valve. Right. Um, but I, I don't know their selection process, or I just 
every now and then see the pop up. It could be folks yeah. that are still building up their own systems and just opted to go with Windows 10. So, I mean, they were really close last month, uh, the month before as well. So it might just be a variance. Maybe a bunch of people finally powered on their old Windows 10 machines to upgrade them to 11 and just happen to submit at that point. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Exactly. Exactly. And the CPU side of things, who do you think would have been on top, Intel or AMD? I'm going to go with Intel on this one. Intel made up 67.38%, AMD at 32.57. So yeah. Intel's got a pretty good uh, pretty good handle on, you know, decent market share, but mm -hmm. uh, Intel definitely still up on top. So let's go ahead and get into this week's tech treats. I got some fun ones for y'all. Cool. Okay, so as always, fantasy and casual game both sides of the spectrum for you. Um, so for the fantasy game, I have Hades 2, uh, battle beyond the underworld using dark sorcery to take on the Titan of Time in this bewitching sequel to an award-winning roguelike dungeon crawler. It was released May 6th of this year, and it is $29.99 on Steam. The casual game I found while scrolling, <laughs> and I took a look at this one, and it is exactly what you think it is. Uh, Placid Plastic Duck Simulation is the ultimate high-tech rubber duck simulation. Uh, it brings you dangerous levels of relaxation with chill music, dreamy 3D graphics, and many different happy ducks. Your only priority is to float around. Zero ducks given. It was released last year, uh, July 22nd, and it is $1.99 on Steam. <laughs> That's funny. I guess, uh, can you end up in a Jeep? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, right now, it's you're just floating around as a rubber duck in a pool did, or in a body of water. Did your dad have any ducks in his Jeep? Nope, he did not. He didn't get ducked, Oh, unfortunately. But I do have a fair bit of rubber ducks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I'm the one with the duck collection. It's very random. <laughs> <laughs> I one time found one on the USS Alabama, just on the floor. Really? Mm-hmm. So I took it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. All right, back to games. <laughs> um, the free epic game of the week is Bear and Breakfast, a laid-back management adventure game where you play as a well-meaning bear trying to run a B&B &B in the woods. Hank and his friends find an abandoned shack and equipped with their teenage ingenuity, turn it into a money-making bed and breakfast scheme for unsuspecting tourists. As your business expands, so do the mysteries of the forest, and Hank soon finds himself uncovering a plot deeper than the wilderness itself. It's free until October 10th, and there is a Should You Play It review. The review was uh, pretty good. It was, it was interesting. Only one of the two guys was uh, doing this particular review and had some really nice things to say about it. But at the end, he gives it a thumbs down. Interesting. Uh, but in the comment section, some people were kind of like going back saying, you know, well, first of all, even if it's thumbs down, it's free. So you, it's hard to turn down free, at least to give it a shot. So oh, yeah. that's very fair. I still think based on that review, it would definitely be worth checking out. Again, can't, can't beat free. Looks like a good game. Yeah. I'll take a look at the photos and some of the videos that Epic had, and it looks like a fun game. I think it'll be it, definitely worth checking out. And next week, go uh, it'll go back to two games, so we'll have two games, uh, free games to talk about. And then some humble bundles for you this week. I have the Indie.io Super Bundle. Explore great indie titles from Indie.io, formerly Freedom Games, with our latest game bundle. Choose from a diverse collection of indie darlings from RPGs to flight and resource management sims like Symphony of War, The Nephilim Saga, Airship Kingdom Adrift, Dream Tactics, and more. It is a 15-item bundle. And then enter the Mysterium. Return to where everything began with the 2021 remake of the original Myst on PC or in VR. More stunning than ever thanks to the Unreal Engine. Venture further into its wondrous worlds with the critically acclaimed sequel, sequels, Riven and Miss 3 Exile. Enjoy acclaimed titles from Cyan Inc. like Firmament and Abduction with full VR support too. 
This is a 14 item bundle. And again, there these bundles, money goes to charity and to the uh, publishers, I believe. You can choose how much you want to pay to Humble and how much goes to charity. I think by default, there's a split where some of it goes to charity, some goes to That's right. Humble for their operations. I want to, I think I want to get into that second mm-hmm. one, the Enter the Mysterium. Mm-hmm. Have either of y'all played Mist? No. Really? No, never played it. Mm-mm. That was a, especially back in the day, uh, when I think I, I, I played that on my either 386 or 486, and it it's an oldie. But uh, if you like puzzle games, I think both of you guys would actually oh, like absolutely enjoy that game. Mm-hmm. It, it's one that makes you think, and definitely worth going back and uh, checking it out. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the pack talk. And uh, one of our customers, Carol, wrote in to support. She did. Uh, she wrote, hello, I purchased an Armor ES system back from you in April, which included a 14th gen Intel CPU. There's apparently instability in those that Intel admitted, and we're going to release BIOS updates in August to resolve them. After looking around for my motherboard, Asus Prime Z790-P Wi-Fi, It seems that because I have a pre-built system, it has custom settings, and I need to ask you guys for the update that will work for your systems. I'm currently running version 1645, March 15th, 2024. If I've misunderstood all that, please let me know. I'd really like to get this fixed because it's causing havoc on my gaming with crashes and whatnot. Thank you. Great question from Carol, and the good news is even though your system is pre-built and we sell it as basically a gaming appliance with a fixed warranty on the whole system, it is made up of regular components. We're not trying to nickel and dime you on BIOS updates or anything of that nature, so download the latest update from Asus. Make sure your system's on a UPS so the power doesn't go out during the BIOS update and update your BIOS, and you should be all set after, like we said in the first topic, applying those default settings as well. Um, And that sort of lets us pivot a little bit into kind of the philosophy behind our doghouse systems is we're building these out of off the shelf components, which is good for us because we can get them through distribution. We don't have to have anything custom manufactured and also good for the consumer because if whether they're in warranty or not, they can freely upgrade, modify, and customize their system with components they can buy at any brick and mortar or online retailer. Um, and with that said, even though you have, you may be out of your doghouse warranty, whether that be the one, two or three year, your components, like we again spoke about in the first topic with Intel, may be covered for a longer period. So if you have a component failure later on, reach out to us. Your system includes lifetime support anyway. And if your component is in warranty, we'll let you know we're not going to try and sell you something when you could, you know, purchase that elsewhere or receive a replacement under the warranty that exists on that component. So, yeah, just a little prosumer attitude we have with our systems. Great points. And I believe that pretty much wraps up our episode for the week. That's all I got. Well, if that's all you've got, that's all I've got. I think that's (laughs) all that Lorenzo's got. That's all you got. That's all I've got. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you what then, Abby, would you uh, go through the ways that our listeners can reach out to us? Yeah, you can email us at podcast at doghousesystems.com. You can give us a call at 214-810-4347, or you can DM us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Threads, and X at Doghouse Systems. Excellent. Well, I hope everybody has a great upcoming weekend. Do you all have any big plans this weekend? No big plans, but if you're looking for something to do in the DFW area, check out Billings Productions or the Dinosaur Company. You can tour a manufacturer for animatronic dinosaurs. Oh, it's very cool. cool. Yeah. Might have to check that out. It sounds very cool. You have anything going, Abby? Uh, Alabama's got another game this weekend, so I will be home watching the game. <laughs> But uh, we'll enjoy a little bit cooler weather. Still a little warm in the day, but the nights have been definitely a lot nicer. We've Evenings been, have been wonderful. Yep, been walking our dogs. Uh, in fact, we went right by your place yesterday. It was it was a little bit later, but uh, the dogs were just enjoying it. So much nicer outside. So, anyways, we hope all of y'all have a wonderful, safe weekend, and we will be back for episode eleven next week. Until then, y'all take care. Two dollars.